I've been using art as therapy pretty much my whole career. I mean, when I first started, it strictly was therapy because I had no idea that doing art for a living was even a possibility. I just needed to do it. And then luckily I was able to turn it into my career the more art was more accepted in the commercial space. <laughs> Hi, my name is Alex Pardee. I'm an artist, illustrator, world builder, and now baseball card designer. We're here with Tops. This is Project 70, Meet the Artist. I've always been doing art, but it really wasn't until, I hope this doesn't get too heavy, but I was, <laughs> I was about 14, 15, and I was diagnosed with severe anxiety and depression, and I was actually like put in the hospital for a little while. And while I was staying there, trying to just figure out what I was feeling and this and that, they had me try different distractions. And surprisingly, in the middle of the night one night, I just picked up a pencil and there was a napkin there and I just started like scribbling because I was feeling the shit. And before I knew it, like two hours had passed. And I was just like, oh, whatever happened to those two hours, like I felt fine. Like I was creating something and I felt good. So that's my focus, right? And so it was pretty much overnight that I, became interested in art. I specifically remember third and fourth grade were the two years where I discovered three things kind of all at once. Garbage Pail Kids, number one, which shout out tops, skateboard graphics at the time, and then all these old horror comic books. And between those three things, the dark subject matter of the horror comics, then there was the insane dementia behind the Garbage Pail Kids, and then there was the colorful, splattery graphics of Santa Cruz skateboards. And I think that those three kind of stuck with me as far as like, that's gonna be like my forever aesthetic. I just draw stuff that I wanna see or that I like or that I'm attracted to, and that all stems from like what I grew up liking, looking at. <laughs> For years, it was really hard for me to explain my style, right, of art. I would overcomplicate things. I've always had a similar aesthetic. I've always done bright colors mixed with dark subject matter. Sometimes the subject matter is even more disturbing than what, you know, what it should be. It was like this confusing aesthetic that I was personally really attracted to. Like I liked when people were like, I think I like it but because it's pretty, but I don't know, it's pretty up too, like, you know, whatever. And when I would just meet people and they'd be like, oh, what kind of art do you do? And I would kind of overcomplicate. I'd just be like, I don't know, it's kind of dark, it's kind of weird. I draw monsters, but like also it's pretty maybe, like, I don't know. And then the term brightmares came to me where it, I basically paint a bright nightmare. So combining that made it a lot more relatable when I just describe it. Like if I say I make bright nightmares, I make brightmares, there you go. Since I can remember, Tops has been the name for any kind of collectible card. In the early 80s, I got into baseball cards. And regardless of the fact that there was other brands of baseball cards, it's almost like a Xerox was called. It. That, that's just what it was. It was a brand, but it was synonymous with trading cards. And I liked collecting baseball cards. But then when Garbage Pail Kids came out, I was so blown away by this hobby that I had of collecting baseball cards and this other hobby of liking weird art that I kind of was just starting to see as a kid. And then being able to do both, I can collect weird art. That kind of like blew me away. And then I think after that, when I was into both collecting baseball cards and Garbage Pail Kids is when I kind of started noticing the word tops on pretty much everything. So tops was just this conglomerate of like everything that was cool as a kid. And I think that that's never gone away. When I first got invited to do Project 70, I was pretty terrified, to be honest. The way that I work is pretty much like I'll scribble and I'm confident in my imagination. So I'm confident that I can make something out of a scribble, like something cool will emerge eventually. But if you ask me to draw something, it's a little more stressful. So when Tops asked me, do you want to do an entire line of 
real athletes, my first thought was just like, no, like I, I can't do that. But then instantly I remembered what tops meant to me. I remembered the opportunity that I have to kind of be creative in a project like this. I actually hadn't heard of Project 2020 before going into this. And it just took me a quick Google search to be like, oh, this looks really fun. So I took on the challenge. Because Acuna was such a big card for the program in general, how do you conceptualize it? And what was that process like for you? And were you surprised by what it led to? Once I kind of made the connection that Topps was asking me to make baseball cards and that Topps also created Garbage Pail Kids and Topps also created these Fright Flicks horror movie cards from when I was little, like all these things that Topps had done, I was like, oh, so I can actually just meld these all together and make cool monster baseball cards. So that was kind of like my first direction. And then in my mind, I wanted to make a conscious effort to not offend Acuna. I respect the collectors, I respect the players, I respect tops, but I wanted to make a card that I wanted to see that I as a kid would have been like, this is cool, it's my favorite baseball player and he's crazy looking. So that was what I wanted to do with that first card. and. The fact that Topps liked it, the fact that it got out and the collectors liked it. And almost instantly I got messages that were like, my eight year old son loves your card. I bought 10 of these because I coach baseball and my players like love your card. Like that was off of the first card. And I was just like, oh, this is awesome. Like, let's go. So how I create the cards is very similar to how I create a lot of my art. I'll start with the sketch. From there, I'll go and work digitally to take that tiny little sketch and just make it tight. That's a step that's usually not incorporated into my stuff because I can just make whatever I want. So making a really tight sketch is the longest process of this whole thing because that process usually is where I start the brainstorming with the story or with the visuals of being like, okay, Brian Hayes would be cool as a third baseman if he did have this ability to run around the field really faster or something, right? So then I start adding spider legs to that. I will then take that initial drawing and recreate it with brush and ink because that is the thing that I'm most attracted to with doing art is taking a brush and taking black ink and just therapeutically making lines. And then I'll scan that in, work it digitally, I'll color the first few layers in Procreate, and then I'll bump it over to Photoshop and color on my computer and work for a while, maybe scan in some textures, this and that. And then we have a card eventually after about three days. I think reconnecting with the sport and reconnecting with collecting baseball cards and just being in the space has been a lot more inspiring, I think, than I was expecting, right? Like, I do find myself having fun. I do find myself anticipating every day. Like, I know it's not a competition, but I wake up and I look at what the other artists are doing and I go, oh, that one's cool, that one's cool. Like, and it gets me going with ideas. Also, like, half of the artists that are in Project 70, like, not only had I not heard of, I'm sure they hadn't heard of me, but now we're friends. And now I have this other group of really, really supportive friends and artists that are just kind of rooting each other on this whole time. I think that half of the fire emojis that I get on my comments are from other artists in Project 70, which is awesome. I got into art because it made me feel better. Art is just this mountain of inspiration for me on all sides. So my whole goal with creating art is to just make other people either inspired or temporarily forget about whatever weird world they're living in and just be like, oh, this is really cool. And then just to get like comments that are like, I have one son who's totally into baseball and then I have this other son, he's not into baseball, but he loves your cards, like it's crazy. So now like he and his mom are into this thing. We didn't think they were getting into collecting. Even if I just got one of those comments, that'd be enough for this whole project. But the fact that they're coming in kind of in droves is awesome. But it still is super crazy that we just have like these like weird bones floating around in us and like. <laughs> So in, in my art, a lot of the times, I like to remind people that, the, that that our skin is just kind of this like wallpaper, right? Like, like yeah, hey, look, look, there's there's a real me right there. Hey, what's up? I am Brittany Palmer. This is Gregory Siff. Yes, yes, it is DJ Ski. My name is Alex Pardee. And you are with Tops. For Project 70. Meet the artist. <laughs> I don't need a wave. Wait, what? Stay in school. <laughs> <laughs>